Greetings to you all, and welcome back to Let's Play Good Star Heroes with me, our Tigger Omega. We are going to carry on with our third stage and our left to right approach the flying battleship. And the game hasn't told you the name of the person in control of it, but his name is Orange, I believe. I've always called him Orange. So, time to talk about something that I was doing, but didn't explain. Melee attacks. If you are touching someone, an enemy, a throwable enemy, and you press your shoot button, you will instead throw them. Throwing does an incredible amount of damage. You got a rough idea for how much my gun does against bosses. Throwing does something like 200 damage. It's very good. But we have other ways of dealing with enemies as well. And to be clear, it doesn't matter if I throw these guys, because they die in one hit. So these guys I should be shooting. It's neither here nor there. Other ways of combat, we have... I don't know why he didn't throw. And I need to focus on jumping a bit now. You just need to get on top of this ship before the screen scrolls you to your death. You only take damage if you scroll off the bottom of the screen. You don't die, but still, it's nice to uh, complete the game can throw bombs out the air. Now, if you imagine some of the most, you know, impressive feats a hero has ever performed, jumping up in the air to grab power bombs to throw back at the enemy has got to be up there, right? Or to throw at other power bombs. Now, that is some seriously impressive stuff. Second melee attack I have is the body slam. Body slam, I really can't demonstrate on these guys, I'll find a better enemy to demonstrate it on. But the body slam does 100 points of damage for every time a person gets hit, and they can get hit multiple times. This guy would demonstrate, but he's also going to have a jetpack. Ah no, he can demonstrate. So I hit him once there, that means that he took 100 damage. Missed. I uh, hit him once there. That's the body slam. It's good against hordes of enemies, because you can really keep moving forwards and killing stuff in your way. So it's good. There we go, that's a better example. Next thing we've got does the same damage and is only useful against people on the floor. We have the slide. Thank thanks for showing how useful the slide is there. Enemies can block, by the way, which is why he didn't die. Am I even going to be able to show something new here? Yeah, fire fire we haven't seen yet. So fire fire is a much longer flamethrower, and it is a real improvement. Here's normal fire three big orbs, and this goes up to five big orbs, so it's a lot longer. Ooh, Tracer. Oh no. Oh no, here comes my worst weapon. We'll just quickly finish off physical attacks here. So body slam, we got the slide, we got the throws. And the last one, which a lot of people don't know about, is we have running slide kick, which has to be inputted like it's some kind of Street Fighter move. It's probably the best attack you've got. Really. Unless someone blocks, and then it's completely useless. But good forward movement. You can't control it after you start the slide, so there's no cancelling it, jumping out the way, or anything. Yeah, welcome to the Vulcan machine. Now, you're going to start to watch me move like I am a complete moron. And that is because I have Tracer Fire. Tracer Fire gives me a completely controllable flame. So I can make it spin in circles, I can make it dance left and right, I can make it hover on the same spot over the boss, I can make it go up and down, I can do anything I like with it. And it's very good on fixed shot, where you stand still, but very easy to walk off of cliffs and into enemies with it when you're on free shot, like I am. And that's enough of this stage, let's fight M. Bison again. My fire is stuck under a piece of wood. There we go. Not something you expected to see. However, this is a pretty optimal weapon for fighting him here. If you know how to use this weapon well, then it's probably the best weapon in the game. But I am really pathetic at controlling it. But I'll try my best. Oh, wow. Don't know how I finished him quite so fast. How you doing, Orange? I was right, your name is Orange. So 
Oops, so my fire is getting sucked to the earth. I'm not pressing anything there. Now, Orange is a boss who specializes in physical attacks. And the way you have to fight the Orange fight is by lots of dodging, by flipping underneath the helicopter. And that's done by pressing down and jump at the same time. You can do it on any platform, I'm not sure we've done it yet anywhere in the game, but it's a pretty standard thing. Or you can jump over it. So it's a lot of dodging, a lot of maneuvering. You see the kind of damage I'm inflicting on Orange? It's not very high. Orange, being a physical brawler, is weak to physical attacks. 400 damage for that throw. I can't slide on this platform, by the way. If I press down and C, I flip, so I can't actually slide. But I can probably foot slide, right? Yeah, I can. Okay, okay, enough experimenting. So I do find it interesting that they made the physical guy weak to physical attacks. Maybe it's pride damage because he's so buff and he's getting thrown around with this tiny little runt. We'll get one more throw and then... Oh, I got him with a flip kick. So when you're flipping upwards, that actually does hit the enemy as well. So that's technically another physical attack. We're going to throw him off the helicopter. No, we're not. Ah, oh, miserable failure. I mean, stage clear and we won, but miserable failure. It is great fun that Orange is weak to physical attacks, though. We have the... I don't know, Diamond, I guess. So well played to us. Only one level remains. We have 160 vitality for it. And it's time to fight Black. Now the scientist says this is a silly dice maze. You are going to see that it is the best dice maze you've ever seen in your life. You are also going to see that it is one of the best stages in any game ever. It is really fun. I like it a lot. I can't show off anything new with that fire. Ah, lightning though. So let's show off Tracer on its own. It's not even called Tracer, is it? I can't remember what its real name is. Chaser, I think. It fires out homing attacks, and they're very weak, but they're very good for dealing with lots of little enemies like these guys. I can just stand here forever and farm points. Good grief, it's a mini boss, people. Oh, okay. I thought I thought I was going to deal with it quickly, and it would be insulting to the boss. But apparently not. But this is Chaser, the homing attack. Very good for getting through stages. Not good damage against bosses, but nice that you can hide in corners and just worry about dodging attacks and still get the damage. I think it's most people's favourite weapon is to use a homing weapon. Specifically this is probably most people's favourite weapon. The homing laser. The homing laser picks a target, and then it sits on that target until that target is dead. This makes it an incredible boss killer. Pretty damn effective at guys that die in one hit as well. But you can see just how incredible this weapon is. Okay, time to scrap that weapon. Let's move on. We have Homing Rapid, or Chaser Rapid. That's what I was trying to do to the first one. That's the thing I said before with the belly slam, where you can... Every time you hear the hit noise, it takes 100 damage. So if you can get it to connect eight times, you can destroy that mini-boss in one hit. Threw that guy through the wall. That guy was seriously hardcore. He grabbed me, dropped a bomb at his feet. Just in a suicide move. He got 20 damage off against me, so well played to him. But, you know, was it worth it? I mean, the guy died in one hit to his own bomb. Anyway, this is the dice maze. It's time for a game of Ludo. We have to navigate our way through this board. Okay, some point, take an item. We land on that, that's good. That's just freebies for us. Any of the fights is a battle. No gun is the worst thing in the world, and we're pretty much guaranteed to land on it for some reason. The way back is not as bad as no gun, but it's still pretty bad. And this dice is the most rigged dice in the world, because it only has three numbers on it. One, two, and three. But this is a gauntlet of mini-bosses. The first one is a snake. You will notice that the homing rapid shot is so fast that it doesn't home very well. It's probably the least useful of the homing attacks, really. The damage is decent, but not my thing. I hope we land on take an item. It will really 
allow me to demonstrate some weapons in peace. You can speed this up by throwing the dice out the air rather than waiting for it to land. Little tricks, little tricks. Rush and go is a time attack where I have to get to the word goal, and I will take damage if I touch that red orb. I don't have a gun here, so every time I press shoot I do some kind of feeble punch. I don't find Russian Go to be very difficult, I just went up and then across. Punching those little things in the background was changing which of the four different colour platforms was uh, disappeared. So it had a colour, and if it was on green, then all the greens disappeared, so on and so forth. That's how you navigated your way through the maze. Destroy it. This is a freebie. So it's a guy with no weaponry. And it's supposed to be sort of a... Anyone played Street Fighter 2? I say that like it's a rare game that no one's heard of. And you have to destroy a car in the bonus round. What's happened to you? Look at the poor man who's been killed in the cockpit. But it's like that. It's a how fast can you destroy it. I took my time because... Yeah, why not? It was enjoyable. So you are missing out on a lot of mini-boss fights here, but I can't help that. The fact that you might not see melon bread is very sad, but there's, I still hope we can see melon bread. This is Pit. It's a game of Pong. You have to destroy the balls, you can't destroy the paddle. If anything touches you, it does damage, but you can slide under, it's not really a difficult boss. These things don't have much life. Uh, and apparently you can glitch through this thing. Okay, it's the most difficult boss I fought. It does the most damage to me of anything. Get out of here, pit. As one might imagine, boss is going to be the actual boss fight. Time for taking Adam. So take an item always has at least one health power up. Uh, it's actually specific. The first two always have one, and the, the third one always has two. And then it has a random selection of weapons to choose from. So what haven't we seen? You've seen uh, homing everything. Yep, we've seen homing everything. You've seen speed fire, speed speed. We haven't seen fire lightning. Okay, so imagine a flamethrower, and imagine charging that thing with lightning. What would you get? Answer, lightsaber. Now the lightsaber is one of the most impressive weapons in the game because it has really good damage output. Look at this thing, of course it does. That's, that's not a good position for me to stand to do this, here we go. Really good damage output. Flip upwards and then back down, yeah. Really good damage output. It can also absorb certain projectiles. Not this one, because this is a mini boss's attack, but normal enemy lasers that come at me, it can deflect, kind of like a lightsaber. This is an interesting boss, so I will give it one more time. The pattern in which these things flash shows you how the bullets from the boss are going to travel. So that's how I know where I need to be in order to dodge. The mini-bosses in this stage are actually really interesting. It's a shame that you miss half of them, just because of RNG, but it makes the game interesting for replays. We skipped No Gun. No Gun is a boss fight called Curry and Rice that you have to fight without a weapon. And it's probably the hardest one. This gel, however, is not one of the hardest ones. I'm going to attack it a variety of ways just because I can. Okay, that was not smart. There we go, a bit of slide kicks. Wall jumping is something I did in the first stage but didn't mention. You can wall jump. When you wall jump, you automatically start a belly flop, which means you damage enemies after the wall jump. So that's useful. I'd like to take an item here. Nope, the way back. Everybody now knows what the way back does. We have a second chance of fighting curry and rice. 
land on a clear tile and nothing happens. You just roll again. You don't make you fight the same boss. Whatever that first fight was, we are never going to see. I'm on Melon Bread. Oh, minion Soldier. Melon Bread must be the next one. The enemies are all in a fixed position. Well, I say enemies, but the the mini games, the fight rooms, they're all the same. Always the same. So, Curry and Rice is always in the same position. Minion Soldier is always here. I just can't remember which one was Curry and uh, which one was Melon Bread, but it must be the next one then, because it's somewhere up on the top row. This guy is kicking my ass. I've got him now, right? Yeah. Not much to say about Minion Soldier, he's just tiny and rock solid. Fingers crossed for a one, people. We missed out on Melon Bread. Unless it's this, but I really don't think it is. No, I'm rushing go. Okay, so Melon Bread is a very interesting boss because he has no attacks. He just he just sits there. He observes you. He is a face. Just just a face, not a head. Just the eyes, nose, mouth. And when he dies, his nose falls off, and that's the only thing that can damage you. His nose blows up when he dies. It's a joke fight. And it, Treasure had something about that enemy. They, they try to slip it into lots of games. It's a fun one. Phantom is one of these... I don't want to call him a mini-boss, but one of these slightly souped-up soldiers that you see in regular levels. But he's got more health than they normally do. You can grab these, right? Yeah, you can. So you can throw his bombs back at him if you want to be fancy. Getting Phantom is quite a good roll because, as with all the ones in the level, he's guaranteed to drop a health drop. My health is really low for the boss, but it should be okay. Depending on if I land on curry and rice now. Okay, this sets me up good for passing curry and rice. Game, I detest you so much. So I do not know an effective way of fighting curry and rice. I just try to hit him when I can. No gun in this stage, so my regular shoot becomes this. Which is not an effective weapon against curry and rice. And the best way I found of beating him is to just belly flop him after he does his kicks. Ooh, maybe I can fight him. Interesting, the boss I'm most scared of seems to be the one I'm fighting the best. I like your dancing as much as the next man, Curry and Rice, but let's get on with this. Signs in the background really rub it in. By the way, if anyone is eating Curry and Rice and it looks like this, I'm afraid you don't have Curry and Rice. You have. I don't know, some kind of dumpling. That blows up and does damage you. Take an item would be good, because that will give me a health top-up before boss over here. Yeah, screw you too, game. Let's go fight boss. Doesn't matter if you overroll on the last one, you don't bounce backwards or anything like you do in certain board games. Thank you, thank you. Soul bonus is always exactly the same, no one knows what it's for. It's just a point bonus you get. Well, it's time for black. Take note to the, the edges of the room here, the different colours. Black is a robot that walks around the edge of the room, and whichever colour he is stood on, determines his attack. So, I didn't notice what he rolled a 3. So he stood on blue, and that's the blue attack. Just attacks in all four corners. Here you can see the serious damage output. And that just clipped me, but that's okay. You can see just how powerful this weapon is. It's ridiculously strong. And I genuinely didn't know you could hang on to black. This is interesting. Hmm. 
I'm learning, I'm learning. Do you want to show off any other attacks, Black? Blue again. I gave you a chance. That is a manly scream. And a manly hairdo as well. Give me the gem, Black. See through your decoy. Crafty man. So, Black throws out a bomb instead of the red gem that he is supposed to give you. And everyone's reaction is to try and collect that gem and to get hit. And then to go, Black, screw you. And then this happens for a while. And then when you get bored of shooting him, he presents another gem. And you say, I'm not falling for this again. Die. Unfortunately, this one is actually real. But this is what you will do. And don't lie to me, I know you did this. Everyone does this. And those are called cheap shots that we like to get in on Black after he's finally done what he should have done and given us the gem. That seems our little Professor Man was getting into a little fun while we were away. You want to help this guy? Hmm. Well, next video, we'll give it a go. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I shall see you then.